konnichiwa what's the first drink that comes to your mind when someone mentions japan sake right well that isn't true the samurais do in fact make lots of other drinks including sake such as shochu wine beer and specially whiskey it's time for us to take a quick revisit through the history of japanese whiskey hello namaste i am kalpana welcome to the queen's cut are you ready to explore this fascinating journey of japanese whiskey with me pour a drink grab a chair let's get started why japanese soju and sake distilleries had likely been making their own versions of whiskey since the mid to late 1800s the real advent of japanese whiskey didn't come about until the early 1900s so how did it all happen it's an exciting story of seafarers scotland signs wood and matthew perry yes we would know about matthew perry shortly the story begins in the mid 19th century for those unaware of the trade history of japan the country isolated itself from everyone the government wanted to limit the cultural and religious influences of the european traders and hence japan remained hermits for almost two centuries from 1636 to 1854 japanese imports exports froze completely prohibiting trade with the outside world japan adopted the act of seclusion this legislation banned all forms of trade with the western world until matthew perry came to tokyo in 1853 who was matthew perry an angry american sailor who sailed in his big black ship to edo harbor forcing the reluctant samurai rulers to open japan to trade the japanese realized that they were far behind technologically to the western world and one of the coolest things they saw the amber spirit that these guys called whiskey and thus the act of seclusion came to an end on march 31st of 1854 through the convention of kangawa matthew perry had brought with him a few barrels of whiskey to keep himself and his crew warm on the long voyage across the pacific ocean he also intended to introduce the japanese with the american speciality and their creativity and what better way to do this than to present the japanese emperor with the best of what america had to offer One of the things that he presented was a 110 gallon barrel of his finest whiskey. Who would have thought a seemingly small congratulatory gift would spark an entirely new industry in Japan? There are no stories or evidences about what the Japanese court thought about this gift. But presumably they put the strange amber colored pure looking beverage to good use whiskey had successfully made its way to the east the japanese began importing whiskey which was a pricey affair enjoyed only by the wealthy people until the early 1900s while the local brewers also started making their own versions of this amber liquid but remain unsuccessful as this early whiskey was actually just alcohol with a similar color to whiskey it wasn't a whiskey since it wasn't very refined and as smooth the actual history of real japanese whiskey does not start until the mid 1920s when two men Shinjiro Tori and Masataka Takitsuru joined hands to found the very first authentic Japanese whiskey distillery. In 1918, a young chemist 
from an ancient sake making family was sent to Scotland and he was none other than the father of Japanese whiskey Masataka Taketsuru As a young boy Taketsuru spent his time in high school studying the production of fermented food He would then go on to work for Seichu Suzo a malt beverage company Recognizing Taketsuru's talent and passion the company sent him overseas to study whiskey production in Scotland Taketsuru studied at the University of Glasgow and learned the intricate whiskey making process there After finishing his studies he took his knowledge and his Scottish wife Rita back to Japan Once returned he met an entrepreneur by the name of Shinjiro Tori Tori was a pharmaceutical wholesaler He had done reasonably well for himself by his mid 20s but he wanted to expand his business so he started the importing business of Spanish port wines Soon after he created his own brand called Akadama Port Wines which proved a great success within years it dominated the Japanese port wine market and made Tori a very rich man but he wasn't content he wanted something more Tori was a big fan of whiskey a drink which was only for the rich and not very easily available for the locals The import of whiskey was minimal and the only thing the local variety had in common with genuine whiskey was as already mentioned just the name and color Tori wanted to change all this he wanted to make whiskey popular in Japan and he wanted to create a true genuine Japanese whiskey authentic but also suitable for the Japanese taste Now Taketsuru wanted to build the distillery in Hokkaido because its landscape were similar to Scotland but Tori decided to build the distillery in Yamazaki and together they founded the Yamazaki distillery in 1923 5 years later Yamazaki distillery released a Japanese whiskey named Shiro Fuda unfortunately this momentous occasion wasn't met with much expected pomp as the kids rule learn whiskey production in scotland therefore he essentially created a scotch which was distilled and aged in japan the japanese population had never experienced the flavor profile of the scotch whiskey hence it was not received well by these unaccustomed japanese pale and failed to capture the market as a result to this poor reception of their whiskey conflict started building between taketsuru and tori creative differences split the two apart about a decade after the founding of yamazaki distillery Taketsuru moved out to create his own distillery in Hokkaido. Aging whiskey takes time. Knowing that, Taketsuru began his distillery as an apple juice production company and named it Dai Nippo Kaju, which means the Great Japanese Juice Company. In 1940, he released his first whiskey called Nika. and Taketsuru renamed his company to Nika Whiskey. Following the suit, Tori rebranded his distillery as well and called it Suntory Whiskey. Today, Suntory and Nika are still the largest and most prominent whiskey distilleries in Japan. Both have won several international awards. Success came slowly, however, as the first few years were difficult. people were still not used to drinking whiskey and the newly founded industry operated at a loss this changed quickly when the war came to japan the army and especially the navy 
were crazy for these Japanese whisky. All right, but what made Japanese whisky so special for them? Granted, it was heavily influenced by scotch, but it was way more aromatic and lighter. And the secret was the Mizunara oak. Mizunara is a premium kind of wood usually used for fancy furnitures and its casks impart with lavish flavors such as sandalwood and coconut. The Mizunara tree need to be at least 200 years old before it can be turned into a barrel. However, the uniqueness of Mizunara oak proved to be both a blessing and curse. When whiskey was aged for a couple of years in it, it became too intense and too woody. That was considered to be of an inferior quality to the European oak. But when the Japanese tasted the whiskey that spent two decades in the Mizunara casks, they realized they hit the jackpot. It became a domestic hit during the World War II. The Americans and the British who occupied Japan fell in love with this local whiskey. Nika's Yoichi Distillery even acquired status as a military installation, as the army simply could not function without whiskey. As a result, both companies survived the World War II. And after the war, they thrived even more, as there was a new army in town, no less thirsty for whiskey, the US Army. The US kept a large standing army in Japan during the occupation period. British soldiers were also stationed there, and they needed their whiskey. Both Nika and Suntory made a fortune, and the domestic whiskey market also continued to expand. After the Americans left, the market shrank a little, but there was still increasing demand for all sorts of Western-style alcoholic drinks, including beer, wine, vodka, gin, and whiskey. Fancy bars, including whiskey bars, were established all over Japan to cater to the new army of curious whiskey drinkers. The demand was astronomical, and in a few decades, it got even wilder when actor Bill Murray drank Santori whiskey in the 2003 film Lost in Translation, showing the bottle to the audience and they screaming Santori time every time they ordered it. And that's Japanese whiskey, a global blockbuster. The story of these two visionaries ushered us into the modern era of Japanese whiskey. They paved a way for us to experience whiskey through a completely new lens and making it truly a worldwide spirit. If you haven't tried any of these Japanese whiskey, it's about time that you get a taste of it. Like always, it's time to raise a toast. And today, it's for Shinjiro Tori and Masataka Taketsuru, the true whiskey heroes of Japan. So next time, when Japan is mentioned, whiskey should be the first thing you think of. Yes, even before sushi. Kanpai! Thank you for joining me on this journey of the captivating history of Japanese whiskey. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Until next time, be good, drink responsibly. After all, whiskey people are good people. Cheers!